as part of efforts to support financial inclusion and alleviate poverty through financial literacy. Islamic Cooperation for the Development of the Private Sector, a member of the Islamic Development Bank Group, recently organized a Made in Nigeria Financial Literacy Workshop in Nigeria. Looking at Nigeria as one of the countries in Africa pioneering Islamic finance, also known as non-interest finance, there is still a huge gap to be bridged in the area of financial literacy. Hello and welcome to the Islamic Finance Weekly where we discuss relevant issues as it affects ethically minded investors, individuals, corporate institutions and the households at large. This edition of the program will be discussing improving the adoption of non-interest finance education in Nigeria. And joining me virtually via Zoom is the director of Noble Way College in Lagos, Mr. Yusuf Alajiki. Good morning, Mr. Yusuf. Thank you for coming on the program to discuss this relevant topic. Good morning, Madam Bokola. How are you doing this morning? Fine, and you? Great. It's nice having you. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure having you as well. You're welcome. It is widely agreed that a shortage of talent is one of the most significant issues facing the Islamic finance, also known as non-interest finance industry in Nigeria. So from your perspective, what is the best way to bridge the huge manpower deficit currently experienced in the ethical finance market? All right, thank you very much, uh, Madam Pekola. I am glad having me on your platform this morning. My pleasure. Uh, regarding the question you ask, that uh, what is the perspective, my own perspective, am I right? Yeah. The best way to bridge a huge number of deficit currently experienced in ethical finance markets. Mm -hmm. And to my own perspective, the little way in which uh, we think uh, we can uh, uh, face the challenge, number one, I must appreciate the effort of uh, the initiator those uh, who initiated uh, the, the system of uh, non-interest banking in Nigeria. And if you look at it very well, uh, uh, it is not only in Nigeria that I can say we are just uh, trying to embark on that. Uh, okay. Most of the uh, civilized countries, they have been on this uh, for quite a number of years and they are actually uh, succeeding on it. Like the question you asked that, what is the best way to bridge the huge manpower oh, deficit. deficit currently experienced in the, 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 the financial finance market. markets? Uh, according to research, my own uh, best way to bridge the huge manpower, number one, is to imbibe the culture of uh, using the non-interest finance. That's number one. Second, uh, secondly, uh, is to use the, what we call uh, the system or the method of uh, fintech that is the modern technology the modern technology and uh, this is going to make me to uh, deviate a little bit on your question you see in our institution let me take it off from our higher institutions most is, uh, importantly we are not supposed to be uh, learning and there's uh, a stagnant in our learning process in different institutions we are supposed to learn as we learn and think beyond the box, whereby students or learners should be able to uh, 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 have what we call uh, different skills, whereby if they are to implement all these, even after graduating, it is going to help in reducing the level of uh, unemployment in our country. It's going to widen and it's going to bridge the huge manpower because by so doing, we are not going to relent on the government. In fact, we might not even relent on the private as well, but we can rely on our, ourselves individually based on the kind of skill we are able to acquire, either within the learning period or outside. So that's just my only two contribution on that aspect. All right, thank you, Mr. Yesu. Indeed, education will raise the standard of Islamic finance or non interest finance industry in Nigeria. So but all hand must be on deck to achieve this. So non-interest banking is the largest sector in Islamic finance industry. Tell us 
the current status of Islamic banking education in tertiary institutions and religious schools in Nigeria. I am going to pick that from the uh, the lower level, uh, which is uh, the secondary, and uh, before I move into the tertiary institution. Now, the current status of Islamic banking now is uh, growing wide because the uh, people are becoming to be aware. They are getting aware of uh, what we call uh, Islamic uh, or non-interest ban uh, banking. Even the non-conventional, as the conventional banks we have in Nigeria right now, they are also imbibing the culture because they see the benefit of using this, the, the non-interest banking in all areas, in all aspects. So, since they are seeing the benefits, they are seeing the, the, the positive impact in their daily transaction, most people are imbibing the culture. And like you said, that the current status of Islamic banking education in tertiary institutions, uh, uh, tertiary institutions, they don't really imbibe such culture, but I'm going to encourage or advise uh, the, 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 starting from the NUC and the governing bodies of uh, each uh, institution that we should inculcate this in our syllabus. And by so doing, for any students, regardless of the course such students is uh, uh, studying, they should be aware of what we call uh, Islamic banking in our tertiary institutions. And by so doing, it's not going to stop on that aspect. We are supposed to express or extend this to our secondary level, even to the primary level. Under financial literacy, we are supposed to let our pupils, our learners, our students aware of Islamic banking because a couple of years to come, we are going to see that it's going to benefit us a lot, even more than the conventional banks that uh, we have been into for quite a number of years now. All right, so apart from inculcating Islamic finance education in schools curriculum. So what additional approach should the NUC take in Nigeria? The additional approach the NUC can take on this regard, they can't do it alone. They can't do it alone. There should be a kind of a collaborative effort with the JAM in making sure that uh, for any student who is going to enroll or looking for admission towards any higher institution, they should include that as part of their curriculum. They should include that as part of their subjects. If they can do that, everyone is going to be aware that you can't do without this uh, Islamic banking uh, stuff of the thing. It all depends on how the module is being uh, 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 structurized. So they should work it out in such a way that any student who is taking jam or any student who is uh, 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 aiming as in, towards getting uh, into any high institution in Nigeria will have it in one way or the other as additional course. It might not be major, it might be minor. So by so doing, this information will continue to, to, to grow wide and within a very short period of time, we are all going to be aware of the benefits of uh, Islamic banking in our country. You are the director of Noble Way College. Will you suggest Islamic finance education should be added to the curriculum, including primary and secondary schools? Or what is your perspective on this? All right. Thank you very much for that aspect. In fact, uh, one of the things that we do as Noble College, it's not uh, that uh, we are only taking them uh, the normal basic uh, uh, subjects. We learn beyond box. We go beyond learning in the classroom. In fact, we, uh, we it's part of our curriculum that uh, every student in our school, uh, we undergo what we call a vocational skill, which is going to, in return, bring uh, a kind of a little finance to their pockets and also assist their parents because uh, there is no how we're going to have a, a, a balanced equation it's not possible we will be having certain parents who can't afford uh, the fee of uh, the, the average uh, institution so to say so by so doing if they are able to acquire these skills it's going to help them it's going to help the parent as well and the student themselves 
they must have acquired the skill before they finish their secondary school. So, if it continues to go like that, by the time they are able to uh, gain admission into the higher institution and beyond, they won't relent or rely on anybody, a survivor. So what they rely is, on what they do. What is your recommendation from, from the teachings of Islamic finance education from the grassroots? What is your recommendation? All right, my recommendation is that uh, we should include that into uh, uh, the, the financial literacy. And uh, we should also attach that to our, uh, as part of the subjects they were doing, most especially from the primary school to the secondary and up all like that. So when they include that in the curriculum, we know that it is part of the things that they're going to learn in their basic uh, uh, learning system. So it should keep going like that. And by the time they, they, are, they, are, they are graduating, they have the skill, they have the knowledge already, so it shouldn't be a problem for them to revive such a, 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 a culture. So since it is part of the curriculum, they are learning it from the preliminary level up to the secondary level. Because we also take them financial literacy. So under financial literacy, we can attach the Islamic banking as well. And make them understand that this is going to help them a lot. It's going to help our society. It's going to help our country. It's going to help the world at large if we imbibe the culture. I myself, I have also imbibed such culture. I am using Islamic finance presently. I wouldn't mention name. So I have some banks that I use their, 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 their uh, portal and they're about Islamic uh, uh, banking because uh, I won't deceive my sister. It is the best way. It is the best way to reduce the level of uh, economic meltdown and all the kind of uh, uh, issues coming up in our country. So if you can invite such culture, we'll discover that it's going to help us a lot. The masses, we have peace of mind. Even the government, we have peace of mind. Okay. By so doing. Definitely, Mr. Yusuf. And I we also heard that the teaching of Islamic finance education meets a pragmatic approach in Nigeria. Islamic financing in its framework could help remove, improve the standard of living of low-income earners and the poor, as you've explained, because you know it discourages exploitation and achieves an objective of social justice. Since the inception of the non-interest finance service in Nigeria, what can you say has been the impact of the industry? But on this regard, I would say we have experienced a kind of huge positive impact since the inception of Islamic finance in this country. Going out of days whereby we, without uh, visiting the uh, conventional banks, we can't uh, transact, we can't do any other thing. In fact, we even have the opportunity of getting a, a kind of a facilities that is going to help any business owners to transact without any form of interest, without any form of uh, hidden charges. Because it's, sometimes it might, be, it might be alarming if we have a, a kind of fund in our account, in our personal account, and the kind of interest, the kind of uh, hidden charges that we they deduct from our earning, our hard-earned money, it can be alarming, it can be, it can be uh, somehow. But with the system of Islamic banking in our country, for those who knew it, and I'm also saying this to the, to the, to the, to the, to the people as in, to the general, that they should imbibe such culture. It is going to help us a lot. It's going to reduce the level of uh, 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 the uh, pain in, uh, uh, interest and thereabout, because Islamically, Islamically, Globally, we all uh, we are all aware that uh, if we are talking about uh, interest based, it's it's affecting uh, uh, our economy, not even our economy only. Globally, it affects a lot negatively. So, introducing the the, the Islamic banking a lot, we need to give kudos to those who initiate, who introduce this into our country. Praise to Allah to. Uh, 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 bless them and reward them bountifully. It's, it's, it's really helping. It's really helping. So I will encourage that the, 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 the society at large should also imbibe such culture, the culture of uh, Islamic banking, because it has, been, it, is, it, has, it has helped a lot in our country. Thank you very much. Behold, the strategy for Nigeria is that the country needs to invest 
more in quality of non-interest finance education, the non-interest finance education in collaboration with the National University Commissions, NUC, they need to introduce more non-interest finance courses at the undergraduate level, as we said. Also, e-learning should be encouraged as the world is in the era of digital technology. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, I, I mentioned that earlier on. I mentioned that earlier on because uh, the e-learning is going to reduce uh, a, it's going to reduce a lot of costs. Exactly. School learners, it's going to reduce a lot of effort mm -hmm. for the learners as well. Mm -hmm. We go digital. Yes. We go digital. It's 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 a, it's it gives us the, the, the kind of uh, um, avenue that we know what we are doing and we are progressing as a nation. Mm -hmm. So when you watch or notice that uh, most of the civilized countries they have gone beyond that. So e-learning should not even be something that we will start thinking about. Schools for schools who are or who really won't know what they are doing, they should invite subculture. They should go e-learning. Let's take for instance in 2020 when uh, COVID-19 came up, uh, school owners or let me say schools suffered a lot. But with the help of e-learning, we were able to pass the knowledge. No child is left behind. No child is left behind. As a result of uh, we are unable to go to school, we are learning. Learning continues. So that is the, the, the positive impact of e-learning in our institution. So it is paramount that we also make use of this uh, platform of e-learning in our institutions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Yusuf Alad Jiki, for speaking to us on the Islamic Finance Weekly. Have a great day, and we hope to feature you subsequently on the show. <laughs> and uh, before you go, if I can see one of the things, okay. am I free? Yes, you are. All right, thank you very much, uh, um, Madam Bukola. I really appreciate it so much. I, 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 I wish you all the best. I wish uh, Web TV all the best. Thank you so you much. You are doing wonderfully well. Thank and you. I believe in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, people will. Uh, gets to know you better mm -hmm. of this picture of your dream. For this talk, and we continue to grow. So we are open. We are open for those who want to partner with us. We aim to go higher. Like I said the other time, that uh, in our school, we don't just teach normal classroom and stuff. We go beyond that. We try to instill what we call uh, vocational skills in our children. So that by the time, even while learning, and by the time they finish with us, there won't be any issue of uh, how do I survive, how do I pay for school fees, how do I do this? Because we also partner with some institutions whereby they are assisting our students in making sure that the issue of uh, uh, we are unable to pay school fees shouldn't be a problem. Or we have low income earners and they want to assist them. Find the government's other thing, and that is the aspect that is to say uh, our room is open for partnership for anyone who is interested in our college. Our room is open, so that's what I can say for now. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Me. All, right. All right, no problem. Enjoy the rest of the day, and you too. Bye. And that will be all for today's episode of the Islamic Finance Weekly. Connect with us on www.prosherng.com. Watch the Islamic Finance Weekly videos on Web TV Banking China. See, we'll come your way next week Friday. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and bye for now. Thank you.